Hi everyone, I have for you this day in history, February 12th. In 1909, the NAACP is founded. In 1789, Ethan Allen dies. In 1924, Rhapsody in Blue by George Gershwin performed for first time. In 1938, Judy Bloom, popular young adult author, is born. In 2005, Christo and Jeannie Claude, The Gates opens in New York Central Park. In 2008, Hollywood writers' strike ends after 100 days. 1912, Last Emperor of China abdicates. In 2002, former Yugoslav President Slobodan Miloslavic goes on trial for war crimes. In 1976, Salmoneo is killed in Hollywood. In 1817, revolutionary leader Jose de San Martin routes, routes Spanish forces to, in Chile. In 1793, Congress enacts first fugitive slave law. In 1809, Abraham Lincoln is born. In 1999, President Bill Clinton acquitted on both articles of impeachment. In 1972, Cambodians launch attack to retake Angkor Wat. In 1973, release of U.S. POWs begins. In 1917, American schooner, schooner Lyman M. Law is sunk. In 1941, German General Erwin Rommel arrives in Africa. And your word of the day is fictile, F-I-C-T-I-L-E, adjective, Latin, early 17th century. There are two definitions, made of earth or clay by, by a potter, relating to pottery or its manufacturer, or capable of being molded, plastic. Examples in a sentence, the fictile bowl was misshapen but made with love. Jewelry was made of fictile material. And your quote of the day, it comes from Stephen Colbert. You can't laugh and be afraid at, in, at the same time of anything. You can't laugh and be afraid at the same time of anything. That's interesting. And your holidays for today on February 12th, Safety Puff Day. Union Day, National Freedom to Marry Day, National Plum Pudding Day, and Darwin Day. That's interesting. I find that interesting. And I have a little extra something for my friend Warren. For my friend Warren, what's the difference between bugs and insects? No matter where you live, you're sure to encounter itsy bitty critters that fly through the air, sting, or creep around corners. You may refer to these creatures as bugs, but is that correct? What's the real difference between insects, bugs, and other creepy crawlies? The science behind the names. To understand the distinction between bugs and insects, you gotta travel back to junior high science class where you learn the taxonic rank. The kingdom, the phylum, the class, order, family, genus, and species. Uh, it's most specific. The scale is how scientists classify living organisms. The five kingdoms are Protista, Fungi, Plantae, Animalia, and Monera. The kingdom Amelia refers to a vast array of multicellular creatures, both vertebrae having a spine and invertebrae not having a spine. Humans, fish, birds are part of the kingdom Amelia, along with lions, tigers, and bears, oh my, of the world. Invertebrate animals, including sponges, crustaceans, beetles, spiders, and clams. The, phy the, the phylum Anthropodia includes what are commonly thought of as bugs. They are grouped with other invertebrate animals with an exoskeleton, segmented body, and paired with jointed appendages. That includes crabs, lobsters, and shrimp, too. While these creatures seem different from spiders, centipedes, or ticks, they are part of one big phylum. Further down the scale is the class Insectia. Insects have an exoskeleton, a head, thorax, and abdomen. 
three pairs of jointed legs, and a pair of antennae. There are millions of species of insects, including beetles, ants, bees, butterflies, moths, cockroaches, crickets, grasshoppers, dragonflies, fleas, flies, and termites. Spiders are in a different class called arachnidia. They have eight legs, no antennae. Their bodies are divided into a cephalo, cephalothorax and an, ad, and an abdomen. What scientists call true bugs are part of hemi, hemithera, hemithera. These creatures are known for their mouth parts used for sucking. Bed bugs, cicadas, back swimmers, and stink bugs are true bugs. Interestingly, ladybugs and doodle bugs, despite their bug monikers, are insects. They are beetles. <coughs> How did we get the word bug in the first place? Originally, bug, buggy, was a Middle English term that referred to a frightening scarecrow. If buggy meant something scary hundreds of years ago, it makes sense that we would eventually be applied to little critters scuttling around the house. Later, the term would be expanded to include several different meanings. For example, a person could bug another person if being a pest. The FBI could bug a room with a microphone. Someone could catch the flu bug. And as technology advanced, software could also have a flaw or a bug. So I thought that was kind of cool. And I thought Warren would enjoy that. So in the meantime, please stay safe. Be kind to one another. As always, hoppy yarning. And Warren, thank you for watching. I love you all. Bye now.